Hello Internet, my name is Zahn and welcome to the first part of my tutorial series on using this program called Rhinoceros, which I currently use to do my two-dimensional design work. Now, to give you some background, Rhinoceros is primarily a 3D modeling and rendering piece of software. I know it's used in a lot of industry for CGI modeling, People will build things and design things in this program and then they'll export it to things for animation or complex rendering programs like 3D Studio Max or other types of industry standards. Uh, what I learned many, many years ago when I started using Rhino, actually in a, a high school class, is while it's primarily used for 3D stuff, it also has a lot of really complex two-dimensional commands that lend itself really well to doing two-dimensional design work. Um, as you've seen with the emblems and other 2D designs that I have here on my channel, the commands are really simple to use once you get used to the navigation of the program itself, and um, I think most people can figure it out pretty easily. Um, the retail version or commercial license for Rhino is incredibly expensive. It's, it's not a cheap piece of software. But looking at their website, I noticed that you can actually download the current build of the software with all of its functions usable for 90 days. I believe after that trial period runs out, you lose the ability to save. But I think you can still use every single command and all the things that I'm going to go through as part of this tutorial series. So if you were to take up design work using Rhino even though the trial periods elapsed you could still create things and render them and export them and save the images but I think your Rhino projects themselves would run out of saving after 90 days um, so as part of this series I want to break down the basics for navigating the software I'm gonna show you how to set up basic commands um, primarily for doing the two-dimensional stuff here. Um, that's what I'm going to focus on for the purpose of this tutorial series. And so let's start off with the opening window when you start the software up. And as you can see here, this is the main window for Rhino. Um, the, I don't have the default settings here because I've already customized all the toolbars that I use. But when it starts up and you open a new file, you're going to see four windows like this. I believe the toolbars up here, at least for this first set, are standard. And I'm going to show you real quickly how to add what I think are useful toolbars to your main UI just for doing the design work. And so basic navigation, you can actually click each of these windows and it changes your working perspective. So if you want to work from the top of your project or in a three-dimensional perspective or from the side or front, um, you can actually change it by double-clicking one of the windows. Now, for the sake of two-dimensional design work, we're only going to be working in one dimension. Uh, I like to use the front window, and if you right-click, uh, I'm using a PC for this, so all of the tutorials are going to be designed for PC commands. Uh, if you right click and hold and drag, it'll turn into a hand and it'll let you move your viewing window, your canvas, if you will. Um, clicking on commands causes you to enter in the command state and you can execute those commands to whatever specifications. Uh, one thing to remember, um, if your viewing window is ever skewed, like let's say you accidentally click something like this, which is a rotate command, rotates your view, and you lose that two-dimensional window. If you want to reset it so that it's standard with the front view again, right-click the tab, go down to active viewport, and hit front. If you go to set view and go to front, it'll re-snap it back to your front view here. It's really handy in case you ever need to reset your, your canvas and get your perspective squared away again. Okay, so what I recommend is setting up your UI with these toolbars 
like this so that when I reference all these commands, um, you'll know where to find them or at least what they are by their button. So if you go over to the side here, and I'm pretty sure these two on the left are part of the default settings. I'm gonna run through all the toolbars which I think are useful. So if these don't show up when you first load the program, if you select all the ones that I recommend here, you should get them. And you can drag them around the window wherever this open space is. If you don't want them on the top like this, if you want them floating, you can drag them into your window. Um, it's really up to you how you customize it, whatever works for you. So if you right click the open space here, this set of checkboxes is all of the tools, the toolbars that the program has. Um, if you scroll down, clicking one of the toolbars will cause it to appear in the window and deselecting it will make it go away. So the first one I would select is extrude, which should be this one up here. I'll explain the commands that we're using from these a little bit later when we actually get to the tutorial of drawing things. So you want to select extrude, main one and two. Again, I think our default, I believe it's these standard buttons here that load with the program. It might even go all the way out to here. So select main one and two. You can see it. You got it minimized this one here. You scroll down. Select the select toolbar. That should be this yellow one right here. Solid tools. This one is useful for 3D stuff. Um, you could put it on here in case you want to fiddle around with it later, but solid tools aren't really going to be useful for what we're doing here. Um, standard, you want to select that one. Surface, this one is important. Surface should be this one right here. We're going to be using one main command from that. Surface tools. I believe is up here. Um, that won't be as useful here. Again, it's got some neat stuff that I can show you how to use later. So you can add it if you want. Transform. Transform is important. You want to make sure and add that one. That should be this one here, which has some commands that are not mirrored on the default toolbar here. But these are all commands that let you manipulate the objects that you're working with. We'll definitely be using that one a lot. So that should get you set up with the basics for your buttons and your toolbars. Again, I'm going to explain really simply how all these are used and actually show you what it means when you're using them, applying them when you're trying to draw things. So let's start by at least looking at the navigation for the window itself when you're messing around with things in here. Uh, we're going to be messing around with two-dimensional curves. Um, the whole point of this is to draw two-dimensional curves and then we're going to render them as two-dimensional surfaces which gives us our actual image itself. Um, this might sound a little bit complex but it's a lot more simple than it sounds and you'll see. So let's start here with the control point curve which is one of the ones I use the most often. This is basically your line drawing tool and it, it's very versatile, you can use it in a lot of different ways. And so, if you click the control point curve tool, your cursor changes into a crosshairs of sorts, showing you where your point is gonna be. Now if you notice, when I'm dragging the cursor along the grid that you're working on, it's following the grid lines, point by point, in any direction I move, it's always snapping to the point, the intersecting point on the grid. That's because I'm using the snap command tool right here at the bottom, snap command. If you click it and it's not clicked by default, that's what causes it to follow the grid. You turn it off, you can see it doesn't move around at all. If you're trying to go for some exact measurements or you want to join things up, Using that's pretty useful, and we'll see why a little bit later. Now the second command is called ortho. If you turn ortho on, and we'll keep snap on, and I draw a line, 
Notice how it only lets me draw in straight lines up or down. You can't go diagonals, and because snap is on, it's snapping to the grid increments in each direction we go. So I can only draw segments that are moving straight. Obviously it squiggles because I'm using different points on different axes, but still only letting me move in one direction, up or down. Uh, that, that again is really important for doing flat lines. Um, we're gonna use this on a couple commands later, so that's ortho. So let me turn that off. Um, when you have lines or objects that you've created here, if you just click on them or drag a window around them and select them, they'll turn yellow like this. Um, to select multiple objects, you hold shift to select groups. Pretty common command using other programs, just like that. Um, delete, deletes them. And so while we're drawing lines, I want to show one more command, and that's osnap, which is the fourth one on the snap tools here. When you click on it, because it won't be enabled by default, when you click on it, it's gonna pop up this additional row here. Now, what I always have enabled when I'm doing 2D designs is end. So, if you don't have it clicked and we're drawing lines again, let's say I do a squiggly line like that, just clicking all over, and I do another one, and another one, just like that, you'll notice they're all separate. They don't join at all, they're, they're just floating next to each other. If we turn O snap, end, and now we draw a line. When we stop one and start another one and get close, it'll join to the end of the previous line that it's closest to and allow you to continue. As we'll see later, this is really important because all the shapes that we draw have to be closed in order to render into a surface. There are two-dimensional curves now, and they have no substance, and the software will not turn that into an actual rendered shape if it's open, like this. So if you have end snap on here, when you're drawing and you're finishing your shapes, you can go end to end like that, and they're closed. So those basic tools are how you're going to draw lines. Now, for the sake of giving you something to work with on the tutorial, let's draw some shapes, and then I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit to the actual commands that will get us to the rendered image, just so you can play around with that a little bit before we get into the more complex commands. So, let's go back to the control point curve, I'm gonna leave my snaps off here. I'm gonna leave end on, because I always have that on. And let's draw just a real simple shape. Like this. We've closed it off. When we select it, this puddle looking shape here is a closed curve, and that's what we want. When you have the curve selected, and you go up here to the surface bar, and you click this one that looks like a circle with the circle cut out. It's, gonna, it's called Surface from Planar Curves. When you click that, it's going to take the closed two-dimensional curve, and as long as it's closed, it's gonna apply an actual two-dimensional surface over everything and make it a shape. So when we click it, it's applied a shape along this whole thing. You could think of it kind of like just drawing a mat on top of something and cutting it out. So when you select it, it is now an actual two-dimensional shape that exists instead of just a floating curve in space. And so I'm sure you're wondering, how do I turn that into an actual image? So the command to do that is very simple. Once you've drawn a surface, however many surfaces you're gonna draw and you've done this, you go up here to this blue sphere, the render command, and it's going to apply and render what you've created so far. So here we can see if I click it, it has now created two dimensional surface from the curve and surface we drew. And so this window here is the render window. 
and you may have to play around with your viewport window if you are doing a really large image because what it renders is dependent on your view in the current window you're working in, front view here. As you can see, if I render it now, it's zoomed out, just like that. Zoomed in, just like that. And you can see here, if you go up to copy, you can copy the image if you want to export it to something like Photoshop to manipulate, or you could just save it locally as a bitmap or a JPEG or what have you, and you'll have your image. So that's our basic shape creation. A little bit later, I'll go into some of the more advanced properties that you can do with these things, like assigning different colors or things like that. So use these commands to get you started. Uh, this is like an intro to using the program, just to get you started with creating shapes, um, working with the snap commands, learning how to navigate within the window here. Um, next, I'm going to go into some of the more advanced curve and transformation tools that let you manipulate things um, a lot more fluidly and give you a lot more flexibility on what you can do with the program because it, it's got a lot of interesting capabilities.